Good evening and welcome to the post show of the EDP of Isla Pro Aracera. A beautiful Friday evening on the west coast of Portugal. We've been blessed with swell throughout the day and loads of action to go through. And some of that most notable action came in that very last heat of the day. Dylan Moffat smashed out a couple of excellent rides. Let's go and hear from him. He's with Joanna Garnell. Yeah, I'm with Dylan and basically all of the Aussie team right now. What a way to end the day. Thank you so much for that. A pair of eights. How are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, good. So, so stoked. That was like a psycho way to finish the day. That was like the reason surfing's like the funnest thing in the world and to come into this crew. <laughs> like everyone's been sitting in the sun scorching themselves all day. So everyone's a bit loony bins, but it's pretty, it's pretty sick. <laughs> and we had a chat with Ryan just before your heat and I was asking what if you could choose one of the guys in the in the water who would you choose and he chose you so how happy are you about going into the quarterfinals against Ryan Callan? Yeah it's sick so stoked I was like when um the end of that last heat finished and Ryan Ryan won his heat I was screaming at him I was like yeah Ryan and he was screaming back at me like good luck so to have a couple of Aussies this deep in the drawer is, is pretty unreal and I hope we can we can go all the way. And what's this crew gonna do now? <laughs> Just go home probably sit down take it easy Eric and, you know, nice, nice quiet night, probably. Oh, yeah, I can bet. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, James. Cheers. Squad goals there. The upside down Sunny's crew, Ben. It's a little that things. Those guys. It's a little things. Gaze. It's a little props at work. Just, you know. They are. Yeah, and I'll tell you about talk about rankings that Moffat he's scorching up the oh, ratings he's so good and he's uh he's looking on on track to become ct material and spend some ups and downs today paulie and uh, a lot of big movers and shakers Beat counters have been doing their work let's take a look at those updated rankings they're live so they take into account results from the day to day let's have a look here and see exactly where we're at this is the men and you can see the cut line there. The reason it's on 11 is, well, we'll take 10 surfers normally out of the seat. I'm not actually sure why it's on 11, but we'll come and we'll, we'll think of that. And, but let's have a look who's moved, Ben, who hasn't. Yeah, well, Ian Gentil was the biggest mover, I would say. I mean, he was well out, but he didn't have, you know, a whole lot. He was 19 or 20 starting event. He's up to nine, which is in the cut. Maxim Houston, no, well, he's out. Liam O'Brien still surf tomorrow. Emrod, Michael Rodriguez, he was so stoked about his win today. And there's a reason for that. He's also got up to six. So there's been some moves that, you know, Rio Wade, well, he's already through. Leo's in, Ryan's in, Moffat's in, Rod O'Brien. So there's so many big names. The only probably one that we've got to look at there in terms of losing out was uh, Eton Osborne today in, in 10. He's, uh, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be shaky now. And Zeke also. Yeah, yeah Zeke lost in the first round. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the big moves, I would say, would be Gentil and uh, Rodriguez and coming from a bit of a low base. Just Morgan, looking at yeah. outside the cut, Jacob Wilcox. Sibylik as well. So Morg's had a good win today. He's had some massive hammer times. And um, so those 10 spots are huge, you know. You can start. It's, it's one of those guys that haven't had a good results or you know, you've got the canning 700 points and they've had a big result. Ben, so, your mates are going all right. Yeah, yeah. There's pretty stacked in that CT event there. The upside down glasses crew. Something's <laughs> been working for them. And um, yeah, they're, you know, they've got a squad and they're, they're on fire. Okay, let's take a look at the women's rankings. We've decided our quarter finalists here. So we're a little deeper with that event in terms of knowing who's going to be in the quarterfinals, all eight of them. Here are the live rankings. Pickland still on top. Of course, Simmers, Johnson, Callahan still alive. Nikki Van Dyke bowed out though. Yeah, she got an amazing heat with, um, yeah, Soil Lindbad. We might get a, a chance to look at that one of the heats of the day for me. So, yeah, she wasn't fifth. She's hanging on to it for now, but some of those ones down there, so from, I mean, Teresa, we lost unfortunately. Yeah. Bronte McCauley, she's already out. Yeah. Uh, Zoe McDougall, who came in the booth and had a chat to us. Um, and Luana Silva's another loss, but Bohemian Fierro is still in. So there's some sort of hangers a bit lower down, but those top four are looking really solid. Huh? Soya Lindblad and Bohemian Fierro next to each other there. Those two with a lot of momentum. Sarah Baum as well, surfing really, really well. So it's going to be crucial to see who can go, not only just make quarters, but essentially go on for the win. But another big mover, Yolanda Hopkins in 20 places. Unfortunately, she bowed out today, but she's she's on a march here with two events to go. We know all about what she can do. Yeah, she, um, you know what, she'll be disappointed with losing out today against Macy Callahan, but what a great server. And she's jumped up. She's given herself a shot with two events to go. So, yeah, Hopkins, um, yeah, it's good to see her. She would be happy with her results over the course of the week. Should we talk about some top five moments of the day? Yes, oh, please. Yeah. Sound fun? Yeah. 
Let's have a look at our fifth moment of the day. A massive day of competition. Big swell out there as well. Lots of things to unpick. It was a pretty eventful one. Let's roll our fifth moment of the day. And of course, this guy, well, he qualified. He made history. He's the first Indonesian surfer to go onto the championship tour. But he's eliminated Rio Aida. Yeah, actually, uh, it, it was, this was, I, I was here coming to Hagen and uh, this was a pretty weird hit. Uh, there was not too many opportunities and we just saw some n nice um, waves by all the three surfers. Unfortunately, uh, Rui Waida got eliminated on the last wave of this hit. As we see him, Liam O'Brien just absolutely surfing. His, his surfing just, uh, it gets really good on this wave. As you see, Rui, a couple of fours, if I remember, yeah, Ben? Yeah, well, I saw Rhea leaving the event site and he was looked furious. I mean, this is a guy that just <laughs> qualified for CT, but he doesn't like losing. I mean, none of them do, obviously, but you know what? I think he's he's got something special in terms of competitive drive. I mean, he's a great surfer. Look at this stuff, but despite his reactions to the way he qualified and then got knocked out today, it, it means a lot to him. He's going to be really dangerous with that attitude and that talent. Yeah, it feels like it is. It not comfortable he's not on a comfortable zone definitely he just he knows he's qualified but he wants to win the challenger series he wants to be the challenger series champion and he wants to keep on going on events and yeah i saw him too he was pretty he was he was pretty not unhappy with that one <laughs> as you see here crosby this was i think this is like uh, it was a bit of a buzzer beater and and we actually need the score right on the right on the sand and uh, Crosby needed a, a small 40 and he ended up, uh, or a high 3, I don't remember, but he, he ended up just getting uh, the highest enough score for and, getting through yeah, that Yeah, and one. Crosby, he was like down in the 60th position on the Challenge Series, and we didn't have enough kind of TV screens to show where he's at before this event, but, you know, he's got a bit of a high profile, he's turning that into some competitive um, results at this event. He's still got this round of 16 to surf, but if he gets through a couple of heats, he's going to rack, sort of rocket up those ratings as well. The real way, yeah, eliminated from competition, but qualified for the World Tour on moment number four. Katie Simmers took down the local hope, Teresa Bombalo. Teresa, it was a birthday today. It was exactly a year to the day that she um, got knocked out at high on high tide last year and ended up on the rocks. So, you know, she put up a good fight, but Katie Simmers has just got that in her locker. She's, I mean, that's one of the biggest waves we've seen up to this point. She can always come up with some surprising turns. She's got a variety. She's got some flair and some style. And to raise up, she's still right in the mix, but unfortunately she just didn't have quite the firepower to take out the world. Well, currently number two now on the, on the uh, Challenger Series ranking. Left-handers, bit unusual to see that. She oh, surfed yeah. it well. Her forehand's such a good style on her forehand, but... Didn't she, have the firepower for, for Simmers yeah, when she's on fire. She, she made it. Uh, so I was down there with her coach and her uh, family and all that stuff, and, and uh, she she did uh, um, a few a few mistakes. Uh, she fell off on a really good wave on the right on the takeoff, and and both actually both of them got really really deep. On as you see here, this is last turn of the heat. And she's, she tried to go for it, and unfortunately, it didn't go her way. And she was probably she was not happy at all because she need, she needed this result. And this girl, so she just shows everyone why she's one of the prospects of the women surfing. <laughs> Keeping it going is Katie Simmers. Our moment number three was a heat feature. This guy, Leo Fieravanti, also Morgan Sibelik, and Itan Osborne. Someone had to bow out of this. In the end, it turned out to be Itan. Yeah, Leo got off to uh, an incredible start. I think this was his first wave. Within five minutes, he had two sevens uh, posted up and was sharp. He was super quick. He came in focused. And a bit of fin, you know, fin drift. Look how fast he's going. That board looks incredible under his feet. And yeah, I think you'd have to have also him as easily one of the favourites. And then a big finish here. So Leo knows obviously. You know, spends a lot of time in this part of the world. We keep saying that, but it's always bad repeating given his knowledge of the break. And he was just on fire. But Morgan Sibley in his seat. He might see it coming up. Some big numbers as well. So, yeah, really entertaining. Yeah, it feels like uh, Leo is one of those guys that they have that extra... Uh, 
they're, they're super in sync with the ocean and it feels like everything is going that way, uh, their way, and, and it just, it, 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 it was so, so good, this hit, and, and yeah, Morgan, it just sucked really good, good enough to get through one more round, and he's already for tomorrow, <laughs> you see, Leo was happy with that one, uh, as we see Morgan just yeah. going big on that first turn. He's a lead foot, and when he connects, it sticks, you know, he's, that's, that's his sort of modus operandi, Morgan Sibilic. That's it, and that's how he's different here. There's a big section on the inside. It already had one on the outside, and he had to make it pay. He's under the pump a bit at this stage, and he just came in here. There's a big section, and he doesn't hold back when things get meaty. Drives down the line, big section coming his way, and there he goes and just floats it. That was a two-turn combo, and that got him right back in it, and he never looked back. And he's knocked out Ike and Osborne. <laughs> Who, um, he was in 10th position, so knocking out a lot. You'll be angry about being left. Yeah, he won't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's his needs. So yeah, it's still left him hanging. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, she knows him well. Moment number two. This was an epic heat. This one, Soil Inblad against Nicky Van Dyke. Blow for blow. Yeah, every time one of these surfaces posts a big number, that their opponent would go big. This way, it was up to 7.5. Oh. The spray that Soil was generating was huge. And then each time, you know, you think, okay, the next surf would come back. Nikki would come back with some incredible scores. You think, okay, Sawyer's under the pump. And then she'd respond with even bigger numbers. So I'm pretty sure, I'll have to go through the maths, but I'm pretty sure Nikki Van Dyke probably had the, the you know, the highest heat total for a loser today. She's uh, probably going to get through a couple of hits. Yeah. The oh, score. every yeah. heat, every heat. And so, but she surfed great. I was down on the beach when... Um, Dog Marsh gave her a bit of a, a pep talk saying, look, you surfed a great heat, you're surfing great, just take that away from you, don't beat yourself up, you, you know, on any other heat you would have won. So it was good advice, Nikki took it on board, but just against uh, Limblad's sort of real vertical power surfing, she just just didn't quite edge it today. But yeah, it was, a, it was one of the best sort of heats in terms of numbers from both of them. Just oh. goes down the hole there. And then Sawyer under the pump here. I think she needed a score. And she was getting the right wave and just slashing and turning. And those hammer blows on her backside. Nice feet wave there. There's another one. I think she gets another two in here. So, yeah, I like the look of this young lady. Didn't falter under pressure. And then went big when she had to. Yeah, as you see here, just going big. And that's the thing about Ribaida. You have to take advantage of those... Uh, steep sections, oh, that was a really good finishing turn. They're both happy, as you can see, and uh, even though Nikki wanted to go a bit further, unfortunately, it was uh, Sawyer. A late entry, straight in at number one, Dylan Moffat smashing out a pair of eights. Yeah, well, how is he, you know? A lot of people might not have seen this guy surf for late, but I tell you what, you better get used to it, because he's got it all, he's really competitive, smart, and, but every now and again, He'll just do something wild that shows you how good he is. Oh, this wave was absolutely served to perfection. He had every single turn on the on the on the Bible of turns. That's true. As you see here, just look at this finishing turn. Wow, that's after doing uh, uh, some big scores on the outside, uh, big turns on the outside. Helen, uh, I think he actually served really, really well. And in my opinion, he got a bit underscore on that second wave, second wave of him. But uh, I can see why we were talking about me and, and Paul were talking about uh, about his amplitude. He doesn't, he doesn't drive his bottom turns all the way down on the wave, as we see Dylan's doing. As we see, see, this is this is the bottom turn that the judges like to see. Just waiting on the on the bottom and just compressing and getting some speed out of those uh, to get. Uh, to the, most explosion you can actually uh, get from and drive from these turns. Look at this. Look at this last one. It just waits for the right moment. Wham! Yeah, so good. Super strong from Moffat, and he's looking strong, inching his way up in the rankings. And great. So imagine, Paul, you come in, you've had two amazing waves, and you've got 10 of your best mates clapping and cheering you, <laughs> and you're sort of on the verge of CT qualification. You, you wonder why he's happy. Yeah, bringing in that great energy, all of that form into tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, we'll see exactly what we're going to run in the morning, but we'll, we'll have an early call again. Before we get into that, though, we do need to check out the EDP wave of the day and a massive number. Highest one of the event so far from one of the outstanding surfers on the Challenger Series. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson, the EDP wave of the day. A nine-point ride, and I reckon... 
about nine of those points all came on the very last section of the way we've been talking about hard how hard it is to hit look how hard she hits it oh yeah she just goes for it and she did actually did some a nice couple of turns on the outside but i think this and this is on the part of the day that the waves were kind of weird and that's where this turn, just wait for it. it. It's totally worth it. As it, she's wait, she's waiting for the wave to stand up and check this out. It's full mode all over the place. She just loses her balance, but at the same time, it, it's pretty controlled. It's pretty amazing. Shreddy lose. Tell you what, it's fine with the face. There was all sorts of turbulence. She got in the first couple of minutes of that as well, so yeah, yeah she's amazing. looking gnarly. She's uh, such a great competitor, and she's got that in the locker, so. Fun day, guys. Real quick, brief thought from today. The swell came up, performances came up. Are we happy with where things went? Points went up, everything went up. We're getting through to the best servers in the event. Uh, the best, the, the informed servers are making their move. I can't wait for tomorrow. Billy, tomorrow's going to be fun? It's going to be just like today. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. 7.30 call tomorrow for a potential 8 a.m. start. World Surf. League.com. We're going to send you out with some highlights from today. It's been a really enjoyable day. I hope you enjoy those highlights. We'll see you tomorrow. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.